the 300 Win Mag versus the 308. If you need to reach out and touch someone, these are two calibers you need to discuss, and Dave and I are going to take them on right now. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, I'm considering getting an M2010 enhanced sniper rifle system for home defense. Okay. But I'm, I'm not familiar enough with 300 Win Mag ammunition to know if it's a better choice than my current AR-10. Uh, part of my plan, of course, is going deaf if I ever have to fire this thing. <laughs> so I want to know if I'm on the right track. Fair enough, Dave. Uh, you know, these are two really powerful 30 caliber options. And before we dig into this, I want to encourage everybody, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below and click the link in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon to ammunition here at ammo.com. It's our little gift to all of you for being part of the channel and watching the video. But yeah, these are some heavy hitting 30 calibers that can really reach out and touch somebody. And you know, you kind of already hinted on the fact that the uh, the military is starting to use more and more 300 Win Mag than they used to in the beginning. And uh, yeah, it really it speaks... Glue, or is that the round that Chris Kyle famously used? It is. Uh, that was his, uh, his round of choice. And uh, there's some good reason for that. I mean, the 300 Win Mag has some real advantages over the 308 in terms of you know trajectory and kinetic energy and just effective range uh, you know I know I love to talk about my the the dwell it load as we're referring it to here uh, you know but uh, even the the 300 wind mag even outclasses the 308 at a distance with about 12 by about uh, you know max effective range about 1200 yards that's that's pretty substantial yeah, and you've told me that a thousand yards is doable, but kind of stretching it for the layman when it comes to 308. It is. It's really getting close to that supersonic limit with uh, with a 308, and you can get there. And there are tons of competitive shooters who still use the 308 to go out to a thousand yards, and you can definitely do it with the proper loadings. But uh, yeah, you're off the rack. Uh, you know, ammunition probably not going to be thousand yard ready uh, for a 308. Whereas with the 300 Win Mag, you can definitely get there. Yeah, I know it dominates competitions. Oh, yeah. Consistently wins gold at those. And, uh, I mean, gosh, I, I know even 1,400 yards is pretty reasonable for the 300 Win Mag to stay supersonic under. That's crazy. I know. It's it's nuts. They uh, they really packed it in there. But, uh, you know, when you look at the two side by side, it's it's really kind of it's surprising how big the 300 Win Mag is. It's over half an inch longer than the 308. And, you know, for a lot of new shooters, they're thinking 308's big. Oh, no, no. You haven't even gotten into Magnum territory yet. It's a beast, I know. It was developed from uh, African Big Five game cartridges, right? Isn't it related to the 375 H&H mag, which that is, is another real troggle humper? Yeah, that is correct. That is the parent case for you know a lot of Winchester's belted Magnum uh, cartridges that came out all around the same time. And I want to check my notes here because I don't want to get slayed in the comments. Yes, it was the, uh, the 264 Winchester Magnum, the 338 Winchester Magnum, and the 458 Winchester Magnum all came out right before the 60s. And uh, they all came from that 375 H&H Magnum case. And I'm sure you've noticed the, the big omission there, which, of course, is the 300 Win Mag, uh, which didn't come out until uh, 63. Uh, it looks like so it took Winchester a hot minute to get on board with it but it became one of their most popular cartridges that they've uh, produced in quite some time I understand this one can can just topple anything that goes by four legs in America bull moose included I know it's not considered the greatest for Grizz but you can't tell that to the people who use it to hunt for grizzly Oh, absolutely. I mean, you definitely have the power to take down all of your, like you mentioned, moose, caribou, elk, deer is going to be no problem. Uh, you know, yeah, grizzly, it, it's it's doable. Uh, you've definitely got the power to do it. I personally would want something a little bit bigger, but that's just me and my fear of getting eaten, eaten by a grizzly uh, talking. And, you know, the 300 Win Mag can definitely do it. And I've also heard it's fairly popular with alpine hunters as well, those who are uh, you know, looking to go after mountain goats and things like that. They really love that flat trajectory that the 300 Win Mag offers. Yeah, 
to be sure, those are medium-sized critters, but you're not getting anywhere near them because they want nothing to do with you. Oh, but yeah. They give you that, that range, and, and crosswinds can't, can't ruin your day quite as much. So pretty much anything would you I know I know your theory on overkill is <laughs> underrated, right? Exactly. But uh three hundred wind mag, is it a dumb thing to use for white tail? I would never say it's a dumb thing to use. I mean if that's what you have, uh if your your father, your grandfather, or your uncle lent you know, handed down his three hundred wind mag bolt action rifle, I'm not gonna tell you to go sell the thing, unless of course you'd like to sell it to me for an incredibly reduced rate because I'll just I'll take that off your hands for you. So you know, you don't need to worry about it. Uh but no, I, I wouldn't say that it's stupid to use for whitetail, but do you is it more than what you need? It it kind of is. Uh, I think you're spending a little extra money on the ammunition as you know compared to something that might be a little bit easier to shoot a lighter gun as well. Uh, you know the, the 308 gun is going to be lighter and if you have to hoof that through a bunch of uh, brush, it can wear on you after a long day's stock or something like that. Yeah, true pounds are out, ounces weigh pounds as they yeah. say. Yeah, absolutely. Would he, would he crush a lot of venison because I know that's a pretty big consideration is, is how much meat you got to part with in exchange for a more powerful round. I don't think it's going to cause a, a ridiculous amount of damage like say you know you're hunting with the 50 BMG or something like that. Uh, you know we're not going to explode the deer. Uh, will it damage it a bit more? Yeah if you hit it in like the hindquarters or something like that and you you know get into that uh, you know that rump roast that back strap area yeah the 300 wind mag is going to cause a bit more damage and you know, lose a li little bit more than you would with a 308 or a 270 or something like that but it's not oppressive like using oh i don't know a, a 22 250 on a squirrel ah yeah but uh but you could use the 300 wind mag on a squirrel and never be bothered by that thing again i suppose yeah i mean you could blow him into the next life uh i, I think that uh you know he could probably tell you what uh, the winning lottery is going to be next month uh if he could call back and let us know oh, that'd be great <laughs> That'd be great. I'm sure the audience would miss me. Yeah, but, me too. Uh, I'd, I'd accept the lottery winnings. Yeah. yeah, so we may have to try that on our next squirrel hunt, Dave. See if we can't get those to, uh, to rise back and let us know what those numbers are going to be. Chris, you know what I'd do if I won the lottery? I'd buy a 300 win mag? No, I'd buy two weeks of groceries. Oh, dude, now you aren't kidding with that right now. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, getting back on this... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely use it for whitetail. I don't see any reason why not, but uh, you would probably be a little bit more comfortable using a 308. Uh, and the biggest reason for that, honestly, in my opinion, not just is the gun weight, but it's the recoil. Uh, 300 Win Mag recoils about 50% more than a 308, and that's getting to levels that are noticeable. Woof. Do you have like a foot pounds measure for me there? Oh gosh, I would have to go back and check on that, but it is, uh, I don't think I have it handy right here. I would have to go and look. Well, I consulted my notes, Dave, and it looks like the 300 wind mag is going to be slapping your shoulder right around 20 to 30 foot pounds of, uh, you know, free recoil. And that's, that's not nothing. And, yeah. uh, you know, when I've had that, times before, it is huge. It I mean, is. The British textbook of arms says about 15 pounds is mm -hmm. a threshold that becomes uncomfortable. So you're talking a, around a doubles that. Yeah. I don't want to spend. Uh, I'm not going to dump a thousand rounds like I would with an AR. Oh, definitely, definitely, and and this is a real consideration, especially if you have maybe a new shooter, uh, whether it be you know someone a smaller frame like a child or someone who just isn't familiar with firearms. This is not something you really want to start them on because well, you're just going to scare them off uh honestly you, you really want to start with something a lot lighter like a you know a 22 long rifle or even a 223 but if you got to go with the 30 cal as a, a starting round definitely do the 308 yeah fair enough uh <clears throat> we're talking a much bigger cartridge so we're oh, talking yeah. a much more expensive cartridge definitely and then that is something that uh you know it comes into play, especially if you, you know, like to practice, which you should, uh, and you should be getting all of your ammo here at ammo.com because we're going to give you the best price that we possibly can. But yeah, you're looking at about mm, two bucks a round for the cheap stuff for 300 Win Mag, which is about double what you can get 308 for these days. So I mean, you're you're paying twice as much. Now you're definitely getting more for it. Let's let's not kid ourselves. It's it's a big cartridge. That belted 300 Winchester Magnum is. 
it's a big boy. There's a lot. There's a lot behind it. So that the cost is justified. But if you like to go to the range a lot uh, and you like to shoot like I do, it's something you got to consider. You know, the, the U.S. military is, is using 300 Win Mag, but I don't recall seeing any Lake City Quiet pills for for sale. Some surplus. Is this? Have you noticed this? Where's the cheap surplus? Yeah, I have no idea, and I think it's mostly because you know it's really just the precision round. We're not using it for you know frontline battle applications like you know we're using the 308 uh, in our belted our belt fed machine guns and things like that. Uh, all of the door mounted stuff. Uh, if it's not a 50, it's a 308. So there's still going to be considerably more 308 on the market uh, as far as, you know, the cheap Lake City stuff that you're talking about. Whereas your 300 Win Mag is going to be precision hand loaded for, for the snipers. And yeah, they don't really mess up batches too much uh, when, when they're doing that sort of thing. That makes sense. So you're saying if we had belt-fed machine guns firing 300 wind mag, which sounds terrifying. Yeah, it does. Then we could get the cheap surplus. And yeah, yeah. most of the ammo I see for sale is kind of premium long-distance or oh, long-distance yeah. hunting-related stuff. Not really like cheap ball FMJ Serbian-made range loads yeah it's definitely true uh you know you can you can try you can find some deals honestly if you're buying in bulk uh especially that's one way to get uh, your cost per round down if you're buying factory ammunition but uh yeah you really don't see that cheap like i'm gonna slap it in my fal and blast off a you know a mag full of 20 or your ar-10 as you referenced early on yeah you know, we're not going to just blast through 20 rounds of 300 wind mag uh, one, it's going to leave a bruise on your shoulder probably, but uh, hmm. two, it's it's like you mentioned, it's all about the precision, the the application, uh, I think is really what it is. And the 300 Win Mag has really found its home in precision rifle shooting and hunting. You'd mentioned the, uh, the heft of a 300 Win Mag rifle. Oh, yeah. Are we talking long action only? with this round yes uh if if memory serves it is a a long action as opposed to a short action like you would have with the 308 so that definitely adds a little bit of heft to the rifle now that can be beneficial especially with 50 percent more recoil but uh you're not going to get 50 percent more rifle weight so you're still going to feel it uh you know with that 300 wind mag but you know carrying around say you know an eight to to nine pound rifle is going to be a lot more after a long day than a seven pound 308 uh and that's kind of really the the big difference in in the two rifle designs is that uh you know that that weight will soak up some of the recoil but not all of it so uh it is one of those things it, it's a bigger cartridge it's longer it requires that long action that uh you know the 308 doesn't and it was designed for the 308 was designed for that short action just for that purpose you touched on this earlier but you said that the uh 300 wind mag it basically offers about 50% more effective range than the yeah. 308 roughly depending on the on the uh the ammo and the skill of the shooter and the rifle of course but definitely let's say i'm kind of a i mean suspend your disbelief for a second let's say i'm not an elite sniper who's fired tens of thousands of rounds at a range am i ever going to be able to make effective use of the 300 wind mags much farther effective range or am i just kind of kidding myself investing in a rifle that i may not necessarily reap the full benefits from you know it's funny you mentioned that because uh when i was starting here at ammo.com i was in a, a facebook group and a guy was telling me it's like oh yeah i need that 300 wind mag to shoot a thousand yards and i i just asked him straight up i'm like have you ever practiced shooting at a thousand yards like no but i'm gonna need it when i go goat hunting i'm like uh-huh okay I have to kind of agree with you on that uh, assessment there, Dave, to be honest with you. Unless you have the ability to practice at that distance, there's so much that goes into it, uh, you know, shooting that far out. And yes, the 300 Win Mag does help you out a little bit because it has that flatter trajectory. But don't kid yourself, it's not a laser beam, all right? It, this isn't Star Wars as much as I would like it to be. Uh, but if we learned anything from Stormtroopers, even lasers aren't necessarily accurate. Uh, but you kind of are getting a lot more rifle than most people uh you know would essentially need now that being said if you want a 300 win mag or maybe you're gonna go moose hunting uh and you need that power then mm -hmm. you know by all means go for it but if you're just looking for a deer rifle uh you know maybe something to do some whitetail maybe even some mule deer uh the 308 is going to be more than enough uh for what you need 
But again, if it's something that trips your trigger that you really like and you just want to feel that power and just knowing that you have it, I'm never going to tell somebody not to do it because that's the beauty of the Second Amendment. Uh, you have choice. You have options. And you don't have to just get a 308 because Chris said it's the better choice for, for deer. Um, if you want that 300 win mag, you go for it. But Oh, yeah. If folks, if you want someone to discourage you from buying a rifle, you are on the wrong podcast. That's for sure. That is for sure. Uh, and see, we, even if I'm an adult who can't effectively utilize the 300 wind mag's insane range, maybe I could benefit from its slightly flatter trajectory and commanding downrange energy at the ranges I'm comfortable shooting over. I mean, definitely, it will definitely get you there uh, and have more stopping power, more kinetic energy than a 308 would. I'm sorry, I said the dirty two-letter word there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it will definitely help you keep those shots on target as long as you practice and you're, you get used to the recoil. I think that's that's the one thing that a lot of shooters aren't ready for is how powerful it smacks you around. So you're going to want to practice your form. You're going to want to have plenty of practice time at the range before you get out there into the field, uh, especially under less than ideal shooting conditions. Fair enough. So um, you said this is Winchester's later adaptation mm -hmm. of the 375 H&H. Uh, I know we're comparing it to the 308 because we compare everything to the 308. Absolutely. Uh, tune in next week when we pair Korean food to the 308. <laughs> but what, why, why not a 338 win mag? How does, how does narrowing the bullet, how, how was that the, the thing that made this round catch on where the 338 win mag didn't? Uh, again, I mean, you're going to have even more recoil with the 338, and I think a lot of it comes down to just that love for 30 caliber. You know, we love our 30 calibers here in America and North America in general. We got our 30 out six Springfield, we got our 308s, and we got our 300 Win Max. And uh, it's just something that has that American flavor to it, in my opinion. It's just like, yeah, 30 caliber, it's a powerful round. And I, I think just at that point uh, in the 60s, the 338 was not a really popular, you know, loading. Uh, at that point, I think that people knew the 30 caliber. They knew the 30 out six because everybody, everybody's grandpa talked to him about how they used the 30 out six back in the war, uh, mm -hmm. and how they had their M1 Grand. And uh, you know, some people just wanted a little bit more power than that, but they didn't necessarily want to step it up to something even bigger. Now, I mean, a 338, we're talking, you know, medium-sized African game. Uh, we can be using that on, and that's, you know, now now you want to talk about overkill. Uh, and I, I think hunters just wanted something in that comfortable 30 caliber range that they knew and loved, but they just wanted something a little bit more. And the 300 Win Mag gave it to them. I, so I know I've seen loads as light as 110 grains mm -hmm. in the 300 Win Mag, but that seemed like a little a little feathery. Oh, yeah. I, I know you're typically kind of sticking in the 150 to 200 grain range, which is interesting because that's kind of the 308 steel. Yeah, and that's one of the cool things that if, if you hand load, uh, like I do, if you like reloading, is you can stock up on components for both. Uh, and that's a real benefit, in my opinion, because you can just buy bulk bullets, which are going to be cheaper for you. But yeah, you are kind of in that 30 caliber range. And part of the reason for that is, you know, we're not getting into the super heavy ones, is because we don't have enough distance in the chamber and for the action to be able to chamber something that's longer. Uh, so, you know, the, the heavier bullets, the longer bullets we get, we need to have space to put them. And if we're constrained by overall length, which we somewhat are with the 300 Win Mag in just that standard long action, then it's it gets more tricky. You got to seat the bullet in deeper, and that makes more pressure, which means you have to put less powder in it. And I'm sure you can see the snowball effect here, where loading heavier bullets doesn't necessarily give you anything extra. So, uh, somewhat limited by the action here. I have heard that there are some 300 Win Mag actions that are actually loaded into a Magnum. Uh, action where you can load those heavier bullets, but yeah, for the most part, your you most popular rounds for you know 300 Win Mag are going to be in that you know that 150 to 200, maybe 220 range. Huh. So truly interchangeable bullets. If you can go in a 308, you can yep. go in a 300 Win Mag. Absolutely, 100% the same. 
it's a nice little bonus. I mean, you were telling me you would never want to put a 308 bullet into a 762-39. Oh, yes. Yeah, that the old Russian method for, uh, you know, measuring their bullet diameter is, is always fun to discuss. And uh, I've talked about that in a couple articles uh, that you can read on our website on ammo.com. Uh, make sure you check those out when you get a chance. But, uh, yeah, sadly, the, the 762 by 39 is not what we would call it a true 30 caliber like we would with a, with a 308 or a 300 wind mag. Now, uh, me and Chris, you and me, I should say, because I'm addressing you, not the <laughs> audience when I say this, uh, we, we got really, really traumatized during 2020 because so oh, many gosh. cartridges just vanished. Mm -hmm. And uh, to that point, it seems like the 300 Win Mag is here to stay. It's oh, yeah. not a flash pan, not a trend. And it, you know, it's, it's not as good as a lot of more modern cartridges. Like mm -hmm. the 300 RUM. Oh, yeah. I know. Beats it performance wise, but it's less popular because mm -hmm. the 300 Win Mag is a well established uh, tradition nearly now. So yeah. you'd be safe to buy this without worrying about whether ammo's just going to fall off the map in a few years. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that's one thing that uh, is always important if you're considering a new caliber is, you know, whether it's going to be one of those boutique cartridges that just kind of comes and goes and you, you have a heck of a time finding ammo for it. No, the 300 Win Mag is not going anywhere. It's a, like you said, it's an American tr tradition at this point. And uh, it, it holds that market share and it's not going to let it go anytime soon, even if the military is looking at, you know, rounds like the 6.5 Creedmoor and things like that. There's still going to be a lot of demand for that 300 Winchester Magnum and you are completely safe. Uh, if you want to pick up a rifle chambered in that, you are not going to run out of ammo anytime soon. That's the veteran's edge when it comes to ammo. Once veterans are familiar with it, they're oh, going to yeah. want it, which means there's going to be a supply demand situation. So, uh, yeah, no, I just like knowing that before I, I buy a rifle. I don't want another 30 Thompson Center serving as a hat rack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there are a lot of cartridges that just didn't quite make it. And, you know, you talked about the, the 300 or, the, yeah, the, the 30 uh, RUM, uh, sorry, the Remington Ultra Magnum. Uh, the other thing to, to consider uh, that most shooters won't have to worry about is barrel life. Uh, if you're really concerned about barrel life and you are a high volume shooter, 308 is going to be the better choice. Uh, it's not what we would refer to as a barrel burner. Uh, 300 Win Mag isn't too bad, but uh, you are getting considerably more powder charge in there, which will, you know, damage the rifle eventually if shot enough. Most shooters, now just just to be clear on this, most shooters will never shoot enough to shoot out a barrel. Uh, we're talking thousands upon thousands of rounds. Uh, and with the 300 Win Mag, with the cost and, you know, really the application, you're shooting mostly bolt-action rifles, uh, it's going to take a while to get to that. And you should be handing that rifle down to your kids. Cool. So you never really have to worry about barrel replacement unless you're uh, sharpening a Chris Kyle level, skill level. Pretty much. Or you're loading them super hot. Uh, I mean, that that's one thing... When you look, when you're reloading like I do, they always give you a powder charge range. So as long as you're not loading at max charge, uh, you know, these compressed loads and things like that that really heat up that barrel, then you don't have anything to worry about. If I just want something with incredible range and commanding downrange power, would it make more sense to go full on 50 BMG? Or does the 300 Win Mag just offer kind of a sweeter compromise between the 308 and the 50 BMG? Well, I mean, listen, if you have an unlimited budget and money is no option for you, then I'm always going to opt for the 50 BMG because it's a 50 BMG. I mean, there, there's no comparison. Uh, but, you know, the three, 300 Win Mag is going to be more than enough downrange command uh, that most uh, average shooters like yourself and I uh, can handle uh, without having to hear the, you know, the cash register sound every time you pull the trigger on that Barrett. Do you think we can convince our boss that we need an unlimited budget? I'm, I'm working on it one day All at right. a time, and we're going to try and make that happen here. Maybe we should just sell more ammo in the meantime. Hey, I think that's a great idea, and you should be getting all of your ammo here at ammo.com. Again, guys, make sure you click that link down in the description. Get your free $20 off coupon so that it hurts just a little bit less every time you pull that trigger. Well, Chris, I think I'm going to stick with the 308 because I'm just too much of an uncoordinated doofus to really make full use of the 300 Win Mags range. But I bet our handsome listeners are, are probably better shots than me and are all fired up about trying this, uh, this hard-hitting American load now. 
Dude, I can't blame them. It's an amazing cartridge. It has spectacular downrange ballistics, an amazing trajectory. And if you can get used to the recoil, it definitely offers you a lot of advantages over 308. But I'm kind of with you in the same boat here. I have my 308. I'm happy with it. And the ranges that I'm going to be dealing with here in, in Indiana, it's more than enough for me. But hey, if you live out on the Great Plains or you can have a place to practice those long range shots, by all, re by all means, excuse me, go with that 300 Win Mag, you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm.